Hello everyone and thanks for joining us today. My name is Tracy Cook and I'm the online media manager for modernanalyst.com, the premier community for business analysts. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar entitled Why Business Analysts Need to Embrace Smart, Smart Management. Today's featured speaker is Kuno Broderson, co-founder and CEO of Qualiware. And with that, Kuno, welcome. Thank you, Tracy, and uh, thank you to everybody attending. I hope you'll find this uh, an interesting uh, session. Uh, my name is Kuno Broderson, um, and uh, as a co-founder of, uh, of Qualiware, I've been working with the tool and the methodologies and the customers uh, around uh, business uh, architecture and enterprise architecture uh, for many years. We founded Qualiware back in 1991, so it's a mature company. Uh, what I want to start with is a little bit about why is uh, Qualiware uh, here and what is it that we want to achieve uh, and then move uh, uh, slowly into a, a uh, an explanation of, of the concept of, of business analysts uh, analysis and enterprise analysis using the Qualiware toolset. So first a little bit about the situation. What is the situation that, that is uh, facing our clients right now? And, and uh, they basically need to stay competitive. Um, and, and in doing that, they are facing a, a series of, of market dynamics that they need to react rapidly to. These market dynamics would be new technology, uh, mobile technology, or even uh, uh, changes in legislation, changes in business models, outsourcing, insourcing, offshoring, etc. A, a lot of different uh, aspects of the dynamics uh, in, in the ecosystem of the business, um, as well as internally in the business. In order to react to these dynamics, decisions uh, needs to be made uh, to, to implement change and, and decision making uh, of, of these transformations is, is rather complex uh, because or difficult because of the complexity in the business and also the fact that most people does not really want to change. In Qualiware, we, we see that there are three major areas that our clients are focusing on and we call them the three C's. The first area that they need to uh, address in, in order to reacting rapidly to the market dynamics is to get a holistic view of the business. We call that the coherency. Um, so, uh, and coherency uh, has to do with establishing a, uh, a set of uh, related knowledge and put that uh, a related knowledge into a, a structure, a tool where it can be managed continuously. Um, so instead of having little islands of knowledge in, in, in uh, Excel and PowerPoint and Visual scattered all around on C colon backslash temp backslash 2017 or whatever, uh, then using new technology to establish a coherent picture of the business uh, is important. In other words, when you want to change something, for example, you want to change a process or a system, you can pick up that system object in the repository, lift it up and you'll see everything that will be impacted by that change. So uh, if it's a system you want to change, what are the processes that will be impacted? What part of the organization do we need to retrain? Uh, what is, uh, where, where is this system running? Do we need new, new hardware and so on and so forth? What are the strategic goals that will be impacted? In other words, the coherency part will make you able to, to make the right decision, more informed decisions on the changes you need to implement. Which brings us to the next important C, and that is the C that we call consensus. Coming out of the Nordic region, uh, consensus is a management philosophy, which is well known. It doesn't have to uh, mean that everybody needs to agree before we go anywhere. It's more like a cultural thing where uh, uh, there is a tradition for involving the employees, uh, for delegating decision-making, for decentralizing uh, responsibilities, so that when we implement a change in a business, the entire organization being against or for the change will, will have the uh, access to the information and the knowledge they need in order to fully understand why is the change necessary. Uh, and the collaboration uh, around this change going out to the entire organization is a fundamental feature uh, and, and value in Qualiware, uh, Qualiware's ecosystem. In other words, when you've made the decision in coherency, 
the collaboration platform will help you actually implement the change, which is obviously where you want to go. The last C in the three Cs has to do with consistency. Uh, in our world, uh, using uh, process models, business models in general, uh, consistency can be thought of as a sort of cross enterprise wide way of communicating uh, changes. So if we model processes in some way in Europe, then the US uh, part of the organization will have to model processes in the same way. But it doesn't have to be sort of a geographic consistency. It's also about consistency over time. Hence the uh, plan to check act wheel that, that you see as an icon here. Um, if we assess our performance right now and we improve our performance, we, we enable actually by over and over again performing the same set of, of improvement processes. We, we will eventually improve our maturity and, and our performance in the, uh, in the business. So in other words, the consistency is also in a time dimension. Uh, the consistency also has to do with who can get access to what information. So the whole governance uh, aspects of consistency is, is my diagram uh, under development, has it been circulated, what were the review answers, and uh, is it approved? These type of questions belongs in the consistency as well. In other words, the three C's will describe the entire uh, sort of act, uh, uh, intense areas of, of effort where businesses uh, will, will work when they want to build an agile business. If we look at the product structure uh, for Qualiware, uh, we can see uh, at the bottom of the screen, there is a big X. It represents the integration server. This is where everything meets. Uh, and then there are different type of roles uh, representing different uh, personas in the, in the business. In the middle here, we have the collaboration platform. It represents the consensus part that we talked about before. Every business user in the organization basically needs access to this type, uh, to, the, to the corporate knowledge uh, and uh, can interact and, and provide feedback from their collaboration platform. Uh, the architects, business architects, business analysts, uh, enterprise architects, if we move to the right, they have a platform that allows them to build the models, to, uh, to analyze the models, to establish the relationships that uh, exist inherent in the organization as represented now in, in, the, in the tool repository. These this this modules these modules will typically be used by architects, systems owners, specialists, and what have you. On the left side, we have the plus tool, and the plus tool addresses a segment uh, of roles in the organization that we could typically call the process owner segment. Uh, these are managers, middle managers, senior managers who need to uh, provide information to their part of the organization. In other words, spreading the ideas, spreading, setting the goals, and also uh, sort of describing the intent of the organization. In, in a sort of an average client size, we would see that there is about a one to 10 uh, ratio between the number of architects and the number of plus users. Uh, much more sort of process owners. Uh, in other words, people who are not really very fond of process models, but they know they need those models. They have a real job to do, so it cannot take too long for them to build a process model, but they need to communicate intent out to their organization, so, so they have to be there. Um, so sort of very simple type of, of organization in the tool, just rep representing uh, what we talked about just before. And this is a, a Microsoft stack. Everything is, is Microsoft technology. A little bit about some feedback from our clients. The cli client base would typically be a um, mid-size to large-size enterprise, both private and public. Uh, here is a public uh, a directorate for financial management in Norway. Qualier is a powerful and complete tool for modeling our processes. The relationship between workflows, roles, application, risk, and compliance is clearly visualized and accessible to all employees. So the transparency provides some sort of, of uh, trust in, in the uh, process owners and the architects by the entire uh, uh, workforce, which is actually what you want to have. Here's a, um, a hospital, 
Polyway helps us structure and make information available on the complexity of our business processes so that we can plan and implement changes in a faster and cheaper way with less risk. This is the sort of true agile approach to, to making changes, to reacting rapidly to the market dynamics as we talked about before. And here is the last a very large oil company. We have a large IT portfolio and constant high demand for change. Therefore, our architectural models in Qualiware are in daily use by both architects and business people. So we are into a little bit more of a, um, an enterprise architecture tool uh, or usage there. When we look at the Qualiware market vision, what is it that we look at when we talk about uh, our effort, our focus areas, and also our tool development. Uh, you can see these two axes. We have the uh, vertical, we have the role axis going from the architect and specialist all the way up to the C-level. On the horizontal axis, we have strategy to execution, so a full life cycle. And what we hear when we go out and talk to people, if we talk to uh, the C-level in, in strategy, they're basically talking about digitalization right now. Everything needs to be digitalized. Uh, we, we, we consider new technology and the uses of new technology to be an enabler for new business models and, and uh, optimization of businesses. With the digital business, however, a new type of threat has emerged that we didn't see so much before. So risk management is also a very important topic to discuss with the C-level. If we move to the right, to the, to the execution for the C-level, they basically want a situational awareness so that they're able to, to make the right decisions uh, as, as uh, rapidly as, as possible. So the whole business operation model, uh, operating model that uh, has been introduced is a very important topic to them. Moving down to the specialist level, still digital business, service orientation, cloud, machine learning. These are more technical topics, but also very important to Qualiware. Uh, and, and in the execution level, uh, audit, governance, performance, measurement, quality. These type of things are, are what we look at when we implement new features in, in the tool set. And in the middle, normal people, if you wish, uh, just having good ideas and working together. So these are the different areas that will inspire us to put more functionality into the tool and develop new product. So let's move a little bit into the topics of uh, smart management. When we say smart management, we mean that it needs to be a little bit lightweight, it needs to be a little bit agile, a little bit faster than, than what we've seen over the past decades. Uh, no longer will we be allowed to just sit down for, for uh, months and months and create 2,000 process models. It's not enough to have 2,000 process models and maybe an alibi to say we've done something, but if we can't make the business react to those process models, implement the intent of those process models, then we are not, we are not moving uh, uh, in the right direction. So what we've done with the smart management is to open up um, with a web-based uh, web user interface for everyone to be involved uh, somehow at, at their level of knowledge. Uh, so uh, and it's a space for inclusive collaboration or, or, or knowledge sharing, basically. You can, you can build and you can enable your processes directly from your browser. It's sort of an intuitive uh, and, and easy uh, user interface that meets you when, you when you are a process model. So if, so if you have the PLOS license, well, for the process owner segment, uh, you recall I, I mentioned, then this is a very important feature. We are now able to be to invite non-architects into the knowledge sharing community. So, in other words, this is something that is that is quite important for the new generation of users. Uh, on the right side, a little bit about compliance management, something that has to do with uh, what we do with risk management and and everything that sort of is facing the uh, the uh, a majority of our clients actually a, a a need to document that they are compliant with the intent of the business. Uh, so uh, compliance management, problem management, document management, non-conformance management, and a lot of features that are supported in the tool set to enable uh, the big users to not just have a lot of knowledge that they share, but also document that they have and prove that they have a good structure and a, a continuous improvement of this uh, corporate memory. Um, other parts of smart architecture that we are seeing uh, emerging a little bit here uh, has to do with, for example, the strategy. It, the process models are okay. 
uh, and so are other type of models. But we need to be a little bit more strategic aware when we when we uh, present or build our our business models today. So we want to talk about identifying the business goal. We want to talk about new business opportunities, critical capabilities, strategic milestone. Uh, so what does what does the digitalization uh, have a, a, as an impact on our business risk and strategy? This is what is done in the uh, in the strategic uh, modeling phase, uh, ending up with some sort of roadmap that we can start implementing. Uh, the collaboration, I just briefly talked about that, uh, is not just about showing my model to another person. It's also about uh, adopting some of the uh, social media features so that everybody can comment, uh, everybody can have new ideas, everybody can register a problem. Uh, in other words, we will, we will invite everybody into the business model in order to share our knowledge. In other words, this is this the content of, of of the of the repository is not something that sits in the head of any individual it's something we know all together uh, and this is quite important in order to uh, provide the transparency that is required for a a uh, change management another part of uh, of our effort is to establish digital twins digital twins is a new concept it's been received very well uh, by by uh, our clients um, of course, if you've worked with uh, Industry 4.0 or, or um, uh, digital supply chain management, you'll you'll know that digital twins comes from a sort of Internet of Things uh, uh, environment. However, it's been introduced into the business models uh, and into the business analysis environment because it is a nice term basically it's a concept that people will understand here's my business and by the way in this repository we have a digital representation of that business and they will communicate in order to impact and modify each other so there's a connection between the models that you have and the operating environment that we see and that's very important i'll get back to that a little later Governance, risk and compliance, as, like I said, is very important. Strategic business outcomes, we want to see the risk for those uh, transformation initiatives. We want to see the risk for those, our capabilities, our processes, application, and so on and so forth. And obviously, the business process modeling, this is a core integrating factor of all our clients' uh, architecture work. Uh, everybody has processes. It means a lot to people. It's also understood in, uh, widely by the organization. And if we move a little bit into the architecture part, uh, so smart architecture includes information architecture. Uh, the GDPR coming out of the EU uh, a, a year ago, more or less, uh, was sort of a, 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 a Trojan horse for uh, uh, information architecture in, in the business model and the compliance world. All of a sudden, everybody needed to have some sort of knowledge about information concepts and how they impacted uh, the uh, the organization and the processes, especially if this in, these informations were holding personalized information. So uh, somehow the the traditional uh, process modeling or process or in, oriented management system had an architecture that they really were required to 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 build. And I can tell you the, that when we uh, implemented the the GDPR in Qualiware. We let our process owners uh, build those models entirely. It turned out that all our process owners were fully aware of, of course, their process, but also what information concept they were using. They were also aware of what information systems they were using. In other words, it was very easy for them. We calculated about an, about an hour per process. Uh, it was very easy for them to build uh, adequate models to uh, show compliance with the GDPR. The only thing that they had problems with were to identify the actual article in the GDPR uh, uh, legislation to that they were, uh, uh, you know, forced to comply with. So, so knowing your ISO regulation paragraph or GDPR article, that's not an easy thing. But the rest is quite easy. So, in in other words, it's it's quite easy to take on that journey. Just how many processes you have and multiply with one hour uh, and then you're done. Process management, application portfolio management, uh, when it becomes a little bit more advanced, 
uh, you want to you want to take your processes and you want to automate them for example in robotics or or, or you want to build uh, a mobile app to to support your processes the applications that you build in that uh, in that part and the application portfolio you have is something that you can manage in in the tool set and it's it's when it becomes a little bit more enterprise architecture than uh, than just business architecture however starting with the business architecture new type of of models have emerged um, inspired by what we call enterprise design or the design community. Uh, things like customer journeys, um, service management, uh, business ecosystems, these type of diagrams, business model canvas, have, uh, have started to have a, an impact on the way people look at their business from the outside in. Um, traditionally, if we look at enterprise architecture, it has been about sort of, here's my enterprise, let's break everything down to small components. And when we have broken everything down, we are done. Um, that does not, uh, uh, that's not enough anymore. I mean, you still need to break down your business. You still need to have your process architecture, application architecture, information architecture, and so on and so forth. But in order to exist and to react to the market dynamics, you need to know what the market dynamics are. In other words, you need to go out and ask your clients, what is their feeling about their interaction with us as a business? And this is what the customer journey is about. Here we have Tony the Traveler. The, this is a demo of a, an airport. Tony the Traveler, he goes through several phases. You can see the black faces on the top, booking, transport to airport, check-in, ID control, so on and so forth. And, and on the right side, he will be sitting in the airplane. And in doing that, he interacts with different um, channels. So on, on the vertical bar just below Tony, uh, when he books the travel, he goes to a website. When he transport, is transported to the airport, he takes the airport train, the check-in kiosk, the backdrop station, and so on. And for each interaction, we've identified a touch point. And for each touch point, there's a set of you know, satisfaction criteria that Tony has when he executes this touch point. And let me just remind you what a touch point is really. The touch point is where Tony meets our architecture. This is where, uh, you know, he meets our organization, our facilities, our IT systems, our, you know, whatever we have built and, and, and provide as, as the enterprise or the business architecture. He interacts with that in a touch point. In other words, we are able to say, okay, down here, by duty free and food, he's not satisfied. What is it that he's interacting with here? Well, there is a system and there is a technology platform and there is a process and some uh, data models that, that is defining the architecture behind that particular touch point. Now, if we know that Tony is not happy, there's a good chance that we will need to improve those particular artifacts, those particular processes and systems, if we want to improve the performance of the business. And uh, so the end of a, uh, of a customer journey will be that we identify some weaknesses and it's an input into the strategy process. Likewise, if we look at something called the business ecosystem, we are no longer just required to build to building uh, a, an enterprise. We, we also need to exist uh, not as uh, as an island, but in, in, in a community in, with other type of businesses. And more and more, these other businesses becomes a vital part of our performance in our own business. So for the airport, for example, uh, the airport uh, have their own zone, the blue, the blue symbols here, uh, the employees, the passenger terminal, the cargo ter terminal, so on and so forth, taxiways, runways, de-icing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's that's us as the airport. But then we have the known zone, the green zone here. Those are the guys that we talk to all the time. They may be like our major tenants, uh, air navigation service providers, civil aviation authorities, a lot of uh, organizations or or people that we that we interact with in executing our business. Uh, in other words, when we do something, we'll tell them. When they do something, they'll tell us. And then we have the unknown zone, the yellow. We don't know if they are for us or against us and what they mean about the, the way that we handle our uh, airport. And we may even have the hostile zone alternative airport. So we identify the ecosystem and the way this ecosystem interacts. And again, just like before, if we look at the airport and Hennes and Maurits, uh, who has a shop in the airport, there is a series 
of information, financial agreements, uh, processes, technology that represents this particular relationship. And if something goes wrong with the major tenants, there's a good chance that we need to get into this particular set of artifacts in our enterprise architecture. Another set of models that has become uh, increasingly more popular is the capability models. So, so many uh, of our clients have, have sort of embarked on that uh, transition, building at least their level zero capability model. Um, and we have here some uh, a capability model for the airport ground operations, include passenger handling, baggage handling, cargo handling, and so on. And, and you can see if the background of a capability is dark green, it's very important for us. And if the little dot in the foreground is like here, red, that is because our maturity or our performance in this area is not good enough. So if you're a C-level uh, officer and you, and you look at this, where would you put your money? Where would you put your budget? You would focus on improving the online product catalog and the customer requirements and research because these are very important and we're not good at it. So the, the idea of having a capability model as a means of communication between the architecture people and the C-level is, is quite handy. It's something that is important and it works well. So if we analyze the capabilities, we can filter, we can say, okay, if this capability needs to be improved, what is delivering this capability? Well, security control, access control systems, et cetera. So all the different parts of the architecture delivering this capability. If, if the manager says we need to improve this, uh, well, this is where we have to, to put our money uh, and, and change. And if we want to sort of give get a, a comprehensive picture of, of all the data that we see in these analysis, one of the major requirements from our clients over the last couple of years is to be able to visualize non-graphical data in a graphical format. So you can, you can press the visualize key and then it will draw you a diagram where you can analyze, you can focus, you can highlight, you can search for more in-depth criteria to exactly find out uh, these capabilities in the middle here, what is it that we should improve, where should we uh, uh, access, our, access our, or address our issues. The digital twin uh, comes in when we take our models, in this case you can see a sort of an end-to-end -end, uh, um, supply chain or uh, um, uh, model here. Um, so, uh, the, the, so the process flow, the flow of goods and services all the way from the suppliers on the left to the customers of the airport to the right. And then you can see on the right side here, we have some, some performance views that we can switch on and off. And when we do that, we can see the KPIs popping up uh, under the processes. So if you're a, a manager and you can see your processes, you can see how is my uh, business performing right now. So customer satisfaction is red, but customer satisfaction in the dwell time, so when they are actually out shopping and eating, um, has turned green now, which is good. That is where we want them. So we've, we've obviously solved only the traveler's uh, problem from before. Uh, and, and we can even go into a more technology-oriented digital twin. So uh, project we've uh, been doing with IBM, for example, uh, taking the, the models out of Qualiware and injecting them into the automation systems that, that IBM has, their RPAs and their business automation platform. Uh, when the models the, becomes real life processes that are executed 10,000 times, uh, IBM software will, will uh, aggregate uh, uh, information uh, on the performance and this these aggregated information will be fed back to uh, inform the process owners of how the business is performing so so controlling that whole life cycle will will increase the need uh, the chance of improving the processes in the right way that's very interesting uh, for for our clients right now here's an example of a of a classical BPMN diagram uh, with the start events and end events. And this has been automated. And you can see on the right side here, we have performance uh, data co coming out of the IBM uh, execution environment. 
uh, and we can see that okay, locate traveler uh, is not is not very often addressed. This is the locate traveler. It's not it's not every time it goes through locate traveler, but there are uh, 30,000 instances of go to gate, uh, and it's not very efficient. So maybe we want to help people to the right gate in, in a different way. So making these type of of uh, Improvement decisions obviously is up to the business analyst and the process owner, uh, but getting the information so that they make the right decision is something we'll handle with the tool. We have a saying uh, in Qualiware that the biggest problem our clients have uh, is not making a decision, but rather aligning the 40,000 people around the decision that they've made. And that is, that is quite crucial. Um, making the decisions uh, of course, needs to be the right decision. We need to build the architecture. We need to, to have the models. We need to have the operational insights. But it's not enough if we don't implement the change in the organization. And this is um, something that uh, that is quite important. What I'll do now is I'll switch to the, to the actual tool set and I'll show you um, what does this look like when you implement it in, in real time. So this is the, uh, this is the quality where collaboration platform I am logged in uh, my AD has authenticated me so the tool will know who am I and what is my role in the business and what am I allowed to see so this is my desktop I can I can go and look at my uh, my areas of interest uh, so I have all these different areas of interest I can you know click me directly into my processes if I need that the governance workflow engine running in the background continuously monitoring who does what and who is the next in line to do something tells me that there is 12 things I need to do. So in my to-do list, I have a, a change request that has been addressed to me, actually a couple of them. There's a corrective uh, action that I need to, to uh, handle. There's uh, two ideas that I need to, uh, to, um, to assess. And, and so I have the, the things that I need to react to um, in my collaboration platform. So in other words, if my, one of my colleagues creates a new revision of a process and he wants me to be uh, reviewing this, I will automatically get a notification in this platform or on the mobile phone, which you know, you, these, these little red numbers that pops up when you have a mail or something, those notifications will enable the collaboration across the enterprise, even if they're disconnected uh, uh, graphically or, or time-wise. Um, I have some responsibilities. I can go and I can search for, for a process, enter a, a, a word, and it will show me that there are have these high level life cycle processes, and I have a low level uh, workflow diagram that talks about what I do with my car. In other words, this is my this is my own personal desktop. I can see the active uses, the activities over time, et cetera, et cetera. Another desktop that I may want to access is my process desktop. So I can click the process desktop and it will show me what the company has decided that I should be looking at when I look at the processes. First thing to see is I have obviously my high level processes. I also have the business operating model so I can see, I can get the situational awareness. But let's, uh, let's click the, um, the process model here and look at a process model. When I look at the, this process model, I have uh, processes. I have uh, on my left side here a an information bar. Uh, what processes are we looking at? Uh, what goals do we have? What what regulations do we need to comply with? And as I drill into my process models, this uh, left side uh, will continue to update depending on what I'm I'm looking at. Here we have a 3D design. Um, document that sits in SharePoint. So there's a link into other uh, sources of information not contained in the Qualiware toolset, but out there in the organization. Um, Short-term goals, uh, detect errors, policies, regulations, requirements. Just as before, I'm able to go from uh, high level to low level and, and look at uh, my content on the left side. So I'm at the swim lane level here. There are different ways of doing that, BPMN or workflow diagrams. When I'm when I'm a, an ordinary user, uh, what we call a default user, a normal uh, uh, employee, when I'm looking at this process, if I want to know what's happening after this process, instead of having to go up the hierarchy and down again, this booking done event will be, it's an end event in this diagram, of course, but it's the start event of the next diagram. So automatically I'm able to 
move end to end in my processes, navigate and, and also click and, and look at what is inside that particular uh, activity description. Uh, another thing that I can do is to actually edit this process. So if I'm the owner of the process, I can click uh, the edit diagram and I will have a web modeler opening up and I can uh, just very easily just drag and drop. If I draw a line here, it will say, you have three different ways of coming from that first process to the other one. It can be a value, it can be information or just an activity path and I can click that. If I have another object, there may be other rules behind those lines. See, here's another type of line. Uh, this is a value flow. This process produces this business object. So you can easily uh, and rather quickly actually create the new processes that you, that you want uh, and, and use the built-in features in the tool in order to create and model your processes uh, rapidly. The smart management aspects of process models has to do with what can we do with your content and your knowledge in general. So if I switch a little bit gear here and say, most of you will know that uh, you have meetings and when you come out of the meeting, you come out of the meeting with a picture of your whiteboard or multiple pictures of your whiteboard. Um, and for some of these pictures, they will remain just a picture. In, in our tool, you can submit that picture into the repository and whoever was were in that meeting will get you know, access to this picture and they can see what you decided. Sometimes those pictures actually represent models. And we build a neural network where I can, um, I can send my image of, of, of the model, let's just pick a simple image here, um, to the network and it will analyze uh, the, the image and I can then map uh, say okay everything that was a circle will become a business event and everything that was a rectangle will become a business process. Let's do this again, uh, reload this and it will draw me uh, in this case just a, a simple model. But it, it is a way to get fast from idea to model or from uh, something that was just a picture into a, a model. 92.7% accuracy uh, for every type of symbol that you could imagine being drawn on a diagram. It's pretty cool. It will not scan your, uh, scan your uh, uh, diagrams and use them for training of the, of the network. So nothing is saved on our side. We have, we have university students for that. Another way to get fast from non-diagram content into a diagram content is to use a new feature that we've included. Uh, so, so often we have people who want to basically just type their way into a process model. So uh, let's, let's take here, let's create a process model. A sends to B uh, and A sends to C and uh, C sends X to E. So, whoops, sorry, even that needs to comply with the syntax. We can see that here we have X is sent from C to E. Uh, in other words, it's, it's easy for us to, uh, to build models. E sends to F and uh, B sends to F. And, and with the tool, we can, we can analyze and we can also allow the tool to change the layout of, uh, of these models. Uh, so vertically, circles, etc. It's easy for us to take any type of textual input from a, an Excel spreadsheet or Word uh, table of content or whatever, paste it in here. It supports different type of, of uh, uh, separators, so it doesn't have to be this arrow, uh, and and it will draw you a diagram. And and with this approach, we've seen a lot more people sort of actively taking part in the model creation. Sometimes modeling is not easy, especially if you're using like BPMN diagrams and stuff. It is a little bit complex, but if you can help people entering that data in an easy way into a tool, it becomes much easier. Now, some of you will say that's very good. This, this, is, a, uh, this is a process model. It's, it's nice. I could have done that in PowerPoint. And that's true. When, when we talk about the value of a tool like this, 
it's not the ability to draw a diagram. And in fact, you know, I don't suppose we're drawing diagrams much better than the 2000 other diagram editors that you've seen. What is important here is how can we easily get from thought to actual knowledge that we can share? One of the other tools or features that people are using uh, in their daily life, if they don't have a tool like Qualiware, is Excel. They will put all their properties of information systems and processes into an Excel spreadsheet. So we said, why don't we just implement a spreadsheet component behind this? So when you look at this picture, you see these um, eight processes. If I go to my spreadsheet component, you can see there's a little statistic. It will, it will calculate that there's eight processes and um, I need to define 47 more properties. Go to the properties sheet and you can see, okay, here's my processes and here are the process properties that I need to define according to the standard in our business. Uh, it can be changed, of course, from business to business. They will have different focus, but short description, purpose, owner who's responsible, what information does it use, what system is, is used, what capabilities does it deliver, and does it comply with something? Um, you may also notice that some of these cells are gray. That's because I don't have access to change them. So I will only be able to actually change cells that I have access to. And I can use, of course, these type of standard features that you find in Excel. And when I'm done with all this, you can see it's, it's bold and italic. I hit save and it will be saved into the repository. So it's a very easy way for process owners to basically just create the diagram and populate the process properties. So let's go back to the, um, the desktops here and switch role uh, because there's much more to the, to the tool than what you've just seen. Uh, this is the standard symbol user, uh, my desktop process management, and also a view of the, of the risk that, that is related to, to the area that I'm working with. What are the residual risk top 10 or what is the cost of control top 10? Statistics that will be analyzed and presented to the end user. And this is something that the symbol uh, user will, will, will like. If I change my role to, for example, a, I don't know, business manager, you'll see that I have more desktops. Uh, now I have a, a strategy desktop. I have a, uh, I have the process management desktop as before. Uh, I also had an enterprise architecture desktop, for example. So let's go and look at the strategy desktop. Here's the strategy desktop. We talked about how important it is to, to address the strategy, especially sort of the outside in approach. And, uh, and this is what the tool can do for you. You basically have these tiles and on these tiles, you'll see what is relevant for you and the role that you're playing and with the focus that the business has right now. So let's look at the customer journey that we saw before. Here's Tony the traveler. Of course, I can now click uh, uh, on the touch point and I can get this list of, of, of stuff that is important if I want to improve the touch point. But there's another thing that uh, I'd like to show you here. Assuming that everybody in the organization should understand this process model, we have to admit that it's even though it's two-dimensional graphic and we all love that, it could be a little complica complicated to just interpret without knowing what it does. So in general, when you have process models or, or in this case, customer journeys or application models, we feel that it's the responsibility of the owner of the model to make sure that the end, the target audience actually understand fully the model. So we have, we have embedded sort of a, an augmentation of the model. We can basically play the model. Uh, so if we, if we start this model, we can see Tony, he is 42. He's a consultant generating Y. And we can see a picture of Tony. And then we move on to the first touch point and we see a picture. Uh, it could be an audio, it could be a document, it could be a little video. It doesn't matter what it is. We just illustrate the touch point in, a, in, a, in sort of a way that everybody would understand. And this can be applied to any type of model. You can have multiple different uh, views, multiple different journeys, if you wish, or, or scenarios that you want to play. You can, you can even include like YouTube videos and whatever you want in the presentation of the model. So 
it's not enough guys to just build a model it's your responsibility that the end user will fully understand what this model is all about uh, let's move to another another type of model let's let's move to the um, capability model we saw before um, now you can see that I get uh, some uh, charts out here that I didn't get before when I was logged in as normal user. Now and I'm a manager now, and in in my business, these these different charts have been made available for me to to inform me when I'm looking at the capability models. Um, I can go to a uh, property sheet just like before. I can I can look at the capability heat map. Let's let's look at the capability heat map. It will show me a heat map. Uh, with the capabilities and and guess what if I really want to improve my capabilities why don't I uh, focus on the sort of the red line capabilities I can also like we talked about before start filtering my capabilities let me just see just the parts that are actually very important and we know some of them are red let's take a look at the second most uh, um, sort of need in need for change the inconsistent one and then we can say Please visualize this, and, and it will build me a visualized picture of those capabilities with everything that has to do with the capabilities. Um, and I can, I can say, okay, the mobile platform, let's see if I build that mobile platform, what part of my business uh, will be affected? Well, this, 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 and this capability will be in, in, improved. I can also say, I can search and I can say, okay, I know we're building some beacon technology in the in the airport. What will that improve? And it will highlight and and change, uh, show you basically what is it that uh, will be improved if I build this uh, particular um, technology. And then I can say, okay, I want to organize this differently. I want to see these little islands uh, that uh, that I can move around and identify my my areas of of um, effort. So I can I can ask the tool to show me content and present uh, data in a way that nobody actually entered into the repository. This is an analysis that is created by the tool uh, for me as as a, an end user. If we go to um, the strategic roadmaps, uh, also an important part of, of the business analysis. Again, you can see this, the, the strategic uh, initiatives that have been planned. Another little feature I wanted to show you is I can I can play the sort of what if if I if I diesel like this, you can see the calculations are different. You know everything is is disabled, and then I could say what if I only what if I only execute these these three processes? What would be the cost and the benefit of that? So in other words, I can play the what if. Uh, with my content here and and show the the impact of making uh, decisions on the on the um, strategic roadmaps and then we can move on we can move into the enterprise architecture um, to to look at the uh, the application landscapes uh, we can look at the business operating model let's do that here's the business operating model uh, I want to know how is is it going with my airport in general well, here my KPI is defined for these processes when it comes to the airport in general. And I want to know also what about the passenger KPIs? Well, they'll be added or the check-in time KPIs and they'll be added. So I can basically say to get a situational awareness, all these KPIs behind this has to do with this model. Let's switch them on and off as we need more and more information. And then coming uh, sort of to to uh, to the final type of, of diagram that I want to show you here, uh, the application landscapes. Uh, here's my application landscape, uh, an easy to understand application landscape. Uh, there is a set of heat maps that I can work with uh, when I look at the application. So for example, let me just uh, see, here's my heat map for overall business score versus overall technical score. Uh, and I can see that uh, some of these are in dire straits here. This is the, the overall business score e-services. Uh, it's quite an important um, an, an important system, uh, but the the overall technical score is, uh, is unacceptable. So I need to put some money into improving this particular e-service system. Overall business score versus cost, another heat map. You can basically imagine there are different heat maps for the different views of your of your application landscape. 
Uh, so, uh, for, for, uh, from an application portfolio management point of view, here is everything you need in terms of action plans. What are my upgrade projects planned and executed? What is the uh, life cycle of the assets? If I look at the life cycle of my, of my uh, application landscape and everything that, it, that belongs to it, I can get this uh, picture of uh, when do I start hope it will pop up here soon. Uh, when do I start my, um, my uh, implementation of, of the systems? Uh, when, when is it in production? When uh, is it uh, frozen? When is it phasing out? And I can start planning uh, what happens when this system is, uh, is phased, is start phasing out because all the other systems are depending on this system. So I can, I can provide the information to the CIO so that he or she can make the right decisions in order to improve the business and prepare for the change. Um, if you look at the different uh, change uh, initiatives that can be executed on this type of, uh, of, um, of system, and, you, and you, you consider the risk that is part of that. Of course, a, a look at the risk management in general is, is important. And I, we have a whole desktop for risk management. Um, and we can look at, for example, the inherent risk heat map. So inherent risk would be if we have not implemented any controls, what are the risks that, that we need to handle? So there is something here, 4.4, 1.1, 2.1, pump, suction pipe. These are the risks that are most crucial to our business right now. We don't need to do anything with the green. There's something orange here that is also quite, uh, uh, interesting to to work with. So the different type of heat maps, the different views, uh, a, a cross model view of the risk is also possible. So I can say, let me take a look at all the process risks and it will analyze, find all the risks that are related to processes. Some of them might be business risks, some may be financial risks. And we can look at, at the different risks, what processes they affect, uh, what controls have we implemented and what is the residual risk? Uh, so this is an analysis that is made by the system, provided as a report, uh, an interactive report for the end user to focus on the right uh, risks uh, for processes. On the left side, we have some um, uh, menus that represents maybe a little bit more uh, complex views of, uh, of risks. I can go and look at risk in general, uh, the risk identification. Let's look at the risk identification for everything in the business. Here's a risk register uh, and it will open up a, a, um, a, a spreadsheet where I can start defining my risk, the risk categories, what it concerns, what is, who is the owner, etc. And the entire risk management from assess uh, from identification through assessment mitigation where we define the controls and monitoring is part of, of the work that you uh, perform then becomes uh, we we also have business continuity as as part of of the same um, uh, the same um, uh, focus if i want to look at my uh, my own uh, business risks let's say let's assume that i i'm the owner of the um, uh, passenger handling process. Let's go to the passenger handling process. Here's the dwell time. We talked about the dwell time. Uh, when I'm when I'm working with the dwell time, I can work with sort of the the process that is automated. Here we are at the process automated process where I get the data from IBM data uh, showing me uh, how my process is performing. But if I go back uh, one step here, um, if I'm working with risks, even though I can go to the risk menu, I can also click the risk option here and I can focus on the risks that are related to this particular diagram only. So I, I will see here my risks for my process. I don't have any risk for relaxing lounges, but I can create that. Uh, I, can, I can even change it. I can say, oh, actually this is, catastrophic right now and I can document my risk as a process owner. I can draw the diagram, I can build the business process properties with systems and information, but I can also, as a responsible for the risk of the of the process, I can also document the risk directly in my in my web front. So in other words, 
we have a tool and a, and a philosophy that everybody should be involved. Obviously, not everybody can do all the work, but, but for people who are knowledge uh, owners uh, or content owners, it's easy for them to update the content and to share it uh, across this collaboration platform. And I think that is basically what I wanted to, to communicate uh, during this particular session. Uh, we need to react rapidly to the market dynamics. We have the three, th the three C's, the coherency, the consensus, and the consistency. There is underlying technology to, to help you manage all that, including governance, workflows, engine integration with document management systems and, and operational systems. Um, and then there are platforms, very easy to use, easy to use web modeling, easy to use property sheets that you can use in order to document what you know about your process. Thank you for attending and uh, back to you, Tracy. Thank you, Kuno. That was an excellent presentation for today. Uh, we'd like to thank Kuno and thank QualiWare for sponsoring today's webinar. And we'd like to thank everyone for attending today's Modern Analyst webinar. I'd like to remind everyone that today's webinar, along with the slides, will be archived at the modernanalyst.com website within a few business days. And thanks. This concludes today's event. We hope you have a great day.